Well, good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, today's scripture comes from Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3, verses uh, 9 to 19. Can we all stand? Ephesians chapter 3, verses 9 to 19. Give me one, one moment. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 9 to 19. Amen. I'll read the first verse. I'll read verse 9, and then you'll read verse 10, and so on until we get to verse 19. Well, verse 19, we want to read that together. Okay. Thank you, Pastor. All right, so we, we'll read verse 21 together. Okay. All right. I'll begin at verse 9. <clears throat> and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. To the that now comes the principality and power. According to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. In whom we have boldness and access to the confidence by the faith of our own. Wherefore I desire that ye faint not at my tribulation for you, which is your glory. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father. whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Yes. Yes. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by the Spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts yes. by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love. May be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to exceedingly abundantly above. All together, verse 21. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Amen. Let the Lord have blessings to read of his word. At this time, we're going to have our altar prayer. If you like, you may come forward and kneel at the altar. Uh, if you choose, you may stay at your seat. Amen. Amen. Let church say amen. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but that passage is so rich. Amen. Wow, the breadth, the length, the height. You may stand with you. Amen. Amen. Let's bow. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, Thou who has by thy strength kept us. Many of us, Lord, if we are honest, through dangers, seen and unseen. Heavenly Father, even now as we come at this time of simply humbling ourselves before you, trusting, Father, that you in the finished work on Calvary's cross has opened up the door that we might come boldly before us the throne of grace, and find grace and help in this the hour of need. 
Father, our hearts say thank you for this great privilege. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy that has made a way when there seemed to have been no way. Lord, we want to thank you for Sunday mornings. Feel like, Lord, it's the washing machine of the week where all of the dirt and grit and grime of life has come together. And now, Lord, the washing of your spirit and the, and the watering of your word can cleanse and renew and revive us all over again. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your grace that has looked beyond our faults. And then, Lord, given us mercy that, that's not given us what we rightfully do. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your kindness this morning. That has been the quality of your love. It's watched over us and taken care of us. Seen us through every challenge and trial and trouble. Truly, Lord, we, we can say with earnest. You have been better to us. We have been to ourselves. And so right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we, we pause for the cause of blessing and honoring and praising and giving you glory that you are so rightly due of, Lord. Regardless of how we feel, regardless of our stuff and circumstances, the truth is you are worthy of all our praise. So we bless you this morning, Father. We praise you. We give you glory and honor for being such a good God. And even now, Lord, as we, as we grapple in the glory of who you are, we find our way at the foot of the cross and we say we need you. Many of us, Lord, have found ourselves throughout the course of this week toiling and struggling with the trials and troubles of this life. And Lord, we've been reminded that our humanity is, is no match for Satan's trickery. So Lord, we come this morning and we say, help us, keep us, strengthen us, Lord. We lay all of our burdens and cares at the foot of the cross. And we ask now, Lord, as we claim in you, help, hope, and healing for all of the hurting that has been our experience, Lord. Pray this Sunday morning, Lord, as we lift up our children for you, that you would be a mother to those that are motherless, Lord. A father to the fatherless. And, and that father, as only you can, would be a way maker when there seems to be no way out. So, Lord, for all of our cares, and all of our troubles, all of our struggles, we ask for your help this morning. And then, Lord, we want to say in a hurry, we, we need your forgiveness. We're honest, Lord, there were things that we didn't even know we did, and we asked for forgiveness. And then, Father, there were some things we did with our eyes wide open. For those sins, Father, that are unknown, and then those that are known, we ask, Father, for your cleansing, for your healing, and for your mercy. Lord, we want to declare this morning that without you, we can do nothing. But with you, Lord, according to your word, all things are possible. So this morning, Lord, we claim the victory that is ours in you this morning, Lord. With our stuff and struggles and trials, we claim the victory, Lord. With our ups and downs, we claim the victory this morning, Lord. Through the times and tribulations that life will throw at us, we believe according to your word that if we don't just sit on the premises, but stand on your promises, we'll be all right, Lord. So we claim that victory this morning. We claim that victory this morning, Lord. Victory over sorrow and depression. Victory over struggles, inner and outer. Victory, Lord, over the problems and the perplexities that seem to plague us, Lord. Help us to know that in you we are more than conquerors. In you, Lord, greater are you that is in us, he that is in the world. So we claim that victory this morning. We ask for your cleansing. We know we need your cleansing, Lord. We, we realize, Lord, that at our very best, we fall far short of your glory. So clean us, Lord. Renew us, Lord. Refresh with the words and with the singing and the songs, with the prayers that, we, that will be prayed, Lord. 
Renew and revive us, Lord, that we might be lights in a dark world. We might give hope to those who seem and feel hopeless, Lord. We pray, Father, for renewed strength this Sunday morning. As we confess, Lord, we grow weary all times. Strength, Lord, to finish the journey. And now, Lord, according to your word, you, you say that if we lay aside every weight and sin, often that so doth so often easily beset us, that from you we can find grace to run this race, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. We claim that this morning, Lord. We ask and pray for healing for those that are hurting. Deliverance, Lord, for those that have been held captive. Father, for, for grace, for those who feel like giving up strength, Lord, for those who've grown weary. And Lord, in advance, we're going to say thank you. Thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you, Lord, for keeping our children Thank you, Lord, for taking care of our parents. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. And someone said it even in the, in the, in the invitation, in the testimony time, for keeping things away from us that we didn't even know were, were in our path. Dangers that were seen and unseen. Thank you, Lord. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless our nation, those that are in leadership. Pray, Father, that you would give them wisdom today country seems to be wavering, Lord, and wandering away from standards that we used to consider godly standards. Give them wisdom, we pray, Lord. And then, Lord, we pray for church, for the body of Christ all over this world, that we would hold up our lights and stand on the truth of your word, and, and that we would not waver, wagging that bloodshed banner of Jesus Christ. All of these cares, Lord, we cast them on you today. Pray, Father, that when that day comes for us to turn in our swords, stick them in the sand of time to study war no more. Pray, Lord, that in that day we would hear you say, well done. Till then, Lord, help us to do well. A good and faithful servant. Been faithful over a few things. That's our prayer and we pray it in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 May be seated.
saints, when I think of that, when I think of the, the, the strength of that simple song, I believe, y'all, that there's strength in that song to get us through whatever we face in life. That I love you, Jesus, yeah. more than anything. Uh, Brother Ken was right. I, I've had funerals for the last three Sundays out of this, uh, this, these last three weeks. And each and every one has had a different effect on me. Saying, uh, saying goodbye to a neighbor. You know, you don't realize how you cultivate closeness with your neighbors. Been at State on Lord in 30 four years, and then, and then they just died. No warning, no hospital time, they just, they just died. They just died. And then, and then the husband said to me, I wasn't his pastor, Pastor, you, you were pretty close. Did you do my wife's funeral? And somehow or another being the eulogist, you want to capture the, the, the essence of that person's life. And, and you try to put that all in a 15, 20 minute sermon. And it was difficult to do. And then the next week, somebody else's loved one passes. And, and they say, Pastor, would you do our aunties and cousins and friends and, 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 and sisters' funeral? And trying to put all of that into a package of a presentation. Lord, no. And then yesterday, saying goodbye to a grown friend, but Jerry and I was at Andrew, uh, uh, I forget his last name, because we all knew him by Deke. There's an old deacon in the church. And I don't never remember going to Hopewell, where he wasn't always there with a warm greeting, always was always there with a kind, caring concern, and having to say goodbye to an old friend. I really want to say this to us, church, in this pastoral moment. Be careful how you cultivate relationships. Be careful how you treat people along life's journey. Amen. Because we don't know about tomorrow. We don't know what tomorrow holds. And it's, y'all, it's easy to say now, I love you. It's almost impossible to say it when it's too late. Oh, you could say it, but for it to have meaning. Some of us need to say those, I, I call them the three magic threes, the auras. When you recognize there's been some deficiencies and you say, I've been wrong. And then in that deficiency you say, I am sorry. And then you say the last one, I love you. That those words have magical meaning. And I pray that we learn that magic as, as life affords us time. Amen. Amen. Because one day, y'all, we will step out of time and into eternity. Yes, Lord. And all of those things that we didn't get to do will be left undone. Amen. Amen. So I just want to say that. I just I felt like I mean uh, I, I I listened to the men saying as they saying goodbye to their friend. I, I looked at the men that that were once a part of a team and feel the loss of their friendship. And I want to say this, y'all. The cost of loving people is that when they leave, you feel sorrow. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. There's no getting around that. But, but the value of loving them mm. is that you have those lasting memories. Yes, Amen. Amen. So that's my commentary on the funerals of this past week, y'all. And I just want us as a church to know that that in my opinion, I don't I don't hold the final opinion, but in my opinion, people don't finish dying right unless they die in the church. Well, Amen. Well. I mean, I know that's my narrow-minded opinion, but I just think. That the church ought to have something to do with saying goodbye you, to a life that has been well lived. Thank Amen. Right. And so I pray that we will take uh, take all of these things into consideration as God has given to each of us each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't take that for granted. Mm -hmm. As God has given to each of us, the young men walking here. Let's take out let's take opportunity to love them. Amen. Amen. I mean, life is, is just not always fun fair or easy. Amen. 
But if we do what we can while we can, then we have no regrets. Amen. 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 All right. Just need to get that out of my heart. Uh, I, I just uh, help it, Lord. I just know that that we need to do our best because one day we won't be able to do any more. Amen. All right. Just in the way of announcements, again, you all heard me file my formal complaint. Mm -hmm. And to finish my complaint, y'all, <laughs> we're going to have to have the women to assist us as it is our breakfast this coming Saturday morning. Amen, y'all? Mm -hmm. When I say assist us, y'all, just give us some suggestions. Y'all, they had unbelievable meat selections. We left them. We left them. Oh, they left them. All right. Prayers have been answered. All right, y'all? Yeah. Lord have mercy. I mean, sausage, two or three kinds of bacon, <laughs> cheese grits, and regular grits. Amen. I mean, what in the world? Amen. It, it was, it was, it was wonderful, ladies. Can we thank the Lord for our ladies, y'all, and their helpers? What a wonderful time of celebration. I, I even like the way you all done it. Y'all just did it, and and you, and you had a great time of prayer. It was a, Prayer breakfast. I'm going to, as we make preparations for our our theatrical production, that's going to be in one of the scenes. Y'all's prayer breakfast. Amen. <laughs> it's it's going to be one of our scenes. Y'all, we've captured the stuff to put in our scenes. And in my mind, I can just see somebody saying, Honey, I ain't seen you in a long time, but baby, I wasn't missing this prayer breakfast. Amen. <laughs> Honey, you sure don't seem happy and shouting. I've been wanting to shout. Amen. <laughs> So it was a wonderful time. Ladies, I can't thank you enough for y'all gathering and garnering your, your resources and making that a wonderful time. I heard for some of you, Sister Keisha, it was just a rich soul time. Your soul was made full. Yeah. What a blessing that was. So so y'all pray for us. We're going we're gonna, to, I hate to say it, I hate to say it, we're going to follow y'all's lead. Amen. <laughs> I, I hate to say that. We're going to follow y'all's lead and, and have all of those different kind of meats for men. But bacon and sausage was fine with the folk now. Amen. We're going to throw down this coming. And then our, one of our announcements is that we do have a men's breakfast fellowship this coming Saturday morning at 1030. And we've got a lot of stuff to talk about, men. Uh, uh, I, I almost want to share a, a, a grief that I have, a, a burden that I have, because as you all know, we're we're attempting to expand our ministry outreach to incorporate uh, our jazzercise or dancercise classes. But, we, but we're going to need your help. We really are because, y'all, the Lord has troubled me. And I don't want to say the Lord, it may be just me. But we made a vow that everything we do in this church brings glory and honor to God. Amen. 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 We can't just do stuff just to exercise and just to feel good physically, it's really got to bring glory and honor to God. So that really means, y'all, I'm going to need the church to share in the responsibility of making that a ministry. If it cannot be made a ministry, y'all, please hear me good, we cannot do it. Amen. I've been troubled about that. If it doesn't become something where we fulfill those five tenets, that we do all that we do, an attitude of excellence, a spirit of unity, Seeking to win the lost, building up the body, and all to the glory of God. If it can't fit within that scope of our commitment, then we're going to have to take it next door somewhere. Amen? <laughs> Hope y'all won't get mad at me, but I, I would rather y'all be mad at me than the Lord. Amen? Now, we can do it. We can do it. But y'all have got to commit. We have got to commit to ministry. Amen. That means every time we do it, y'all, we always begin with prayer. Amen. Can I get an amen from the church? Amen. Every time we do it. Amen. Every time we do it, that we have some kind of a devotion. Amen? amen. amen. And then, y'all, we, when we get through, we go in in prayer. Thank you. Amen. Sister Juanita said to me yesterday that on one occasion, we were we were doing the ballroom ex dancercising to a song. She said, yeah, huh? She said her children said, oh, uh -huh, mama, y'all wasn't listening to the lyrics. The lyrics wasn't that good. <laughs> so y'all, listen, whatever we do in this church, got to be God honor. Amen. 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 So, so that means we, we have something to do with what's being sang and said at midtown. Well, can I get one more? Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. 
And we're going to need y'all's help. Those of you who want to participate in the dance exercise ministry, the jazz exercise ministry, it's going to be exercising the music. Uh, we're going to need your help. And ladies, can I, can I say, can I hear y'all say yes, Pastor? Yes, Pastor. Y'all going to help, have to help us with the ladies. Can I get y'all to say yes, Pastor, again? Yes, Because y'all know how we do when we boogaloo. Amen. <laughs> Y'all, they said amen. Y'all need to say amen when I tell y'all. I don't want no brothers getting in trouble at midtime. No, no junk in the trunk ministry. No whack the flag ministry. None of that stuff. All right, y'all? Hopefully I'm talking in cold and you adults know what I'm talking about. Amen. No twerking. Absolutely no twerking. In the name of Jesus. Uh, it's jazzercise, meaning it's exercise for old folks who don't have no rhythm and that kind of thing. But if it ever goes to anything else, y'all, y'all just have to be mad at me. We'll have to stop. God's got to get the glow. Amen. Amen. So, so that means men will talk about some some uh, calendar structuring, and ladies, we're going to need that from you. Uh, right now, it's tentatively going to be on Thursdays. From 6 to 7.30. So that means every Thursday, 6 to 7.30, somebody's here to open the doors, even when the choir is not here. Somebody's here to make sure that the basement is warm and clean, wholesome and inviting. And then somebody has a devotional thought. Somebody make sure that that, that what's done there is God on you. And that's the best I can do, y'all. Amen. 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 That's the best I can do. If we, if we do any less than that, I don't think God would be pleased. So I need your help in that area. Pastor's asking for you. All right. One, one more announcement, and that is that uh, it is spring. Spring has sprung, and y'all, we need to do some spring cleaning. So men will talk about that. And let's us, y'all, one of my efforts, one of my prayers is, y'all, that each one of us men commit to becoming one of the three me's. I'm going to talk a little bit about it in a sermon. Me as a mentor. One of us, all of us need to ask God to give us somebody in our life that we can call up and see how they're doing. Me as a mentee, meaning I want an older man, somebody older. Ladies, I see that you guys are already doing that. Me as someone who's looked for somebody that I can count on for spiritual leadership, for, for spiritual direction. And then me as a partner, all three of those capacities. Somebody over us that gives us spiritual wisdom and insight. Somebody that we're over in the sense of giving them spiritual insight and leadership. And then, then somebody that we consider a partner of sorts. Maybe a, a peer or a friend that can look us in the eye and say, come on, man. Come on. Come on. I've got one or two of those people in my life. And, and they kept me from making some tragic mistakes. Thank you. Because they, they sometimes them just looking at me and say, what, what, what you think about doing? Mm -mm, no. No, we're, we're Christians. We're men of God. You're going to have to fight me to do that dumb stuff. You got anybody like that in your life? If you don't, let's pray for that. Let's pray for that, for that Jonathan David relationship. For that kind of relationship where we can have someone that we are honest and accountable to. So we're going to talk about that this week coming. And trust that God will give us those me's. A, a me as a mentor, a me as a mentee, and me as a friend. That we have other men and, and you ladies have other ladies in our lives that hold us accountable. Chuck Swindoll said this when he went to his uh, last place of ministry. He was well into his 60s, almost 70 when he started his last church, which is usually unheard of. A group of people wanted him to start ministry there. And he says, if you, I'll consider that you'll do these five things. What are they? He says, if you'll hold me accountable for my intimate, personal walk with God. He says, I'm, I'm going to give y'all that right. And they, they said, okay. And he says, then hold me accountable for my, for my private walk with my wife and children. Ask me, how you doing with your wife? How you doing with your children? And then he said, and then for my public walk as a pastor, my time to study, my time to pray and prepare. And then, and then, then my professional responsibility as a community leader. And they said, well, Pastor, that's four. What's the fifth one? 
He said, and ask me, did I lie on every one of those last four? <laughs> Amen. Y'all, if we can find place in our lives for that kind of transparency and honesty, I think we'll make it home all right. Amen. Let me say that again. Amen. I think we'll make it home all right. Amen. We're on our way home, y'all, and we're building our house. Amen. I think if we do that, we'll, be, we'll make, it all, make it home all right. We're going to ask the Lord bless our choir and bless our worship. Thank y'all for joining us. To all of our visitors, matter of fact, we have our visitors to stand and give us your name and if you want to, your church affiliation. Give us your name. If you just, if you just want to give us your name, that's fine. Um, my name is Joseph. That's Joseph, y'all. God bless you, Joseph. Welcome to Midtown. Amen. Name's what? Name's what? Jamari. Jamar? Jamari. Jamari. Welcome, Jamar. Welcome to Midtown. God bless you. Get away with that bad talent. <laughs> we gotta do better than that good talent. Um, once again, like I said earlier, it's an honor and pleasure to be in the house of the Lord. Um, my name is Terrence Hurd. My wife Nina Hurd. I gotta make sure I say her name because one time I did that at church and I heard about it. <laughs> so um, I'm the school board member at Lyons here in the city of Buffalo. Uh, I'm happy to be here to uh, celebrate God with you guys. And, uh, Amen. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, young men, for joining us. We hope you feel at home. We pray that you will find our mantra is really the meaning of our message, and that is that we are a church where everybody is somebody. Yes. yes Amen, y'all. Yes. What's the rest of that? Yes. Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Yes. Quiet.
good commentary on that, y'all. It don't have to feel good, look good, sound good. It's still good. Amen. The blood still works. Yeah. We, we take so many of our traditions for granted. But could you imagine? The, the, the Pharaoh has not, has treated the Egypt, has treated the Hebrews bad. Everything Moses did made him angrier. And the angrier he got, the harder he became on him. And the Lord told Moses to tell the people, put, kill a lamb and put the blood over the doorpost of their house. And that night, right after dark, you could hear the weeping and the mourning all over the city, even into the palace, because the blood yeah. 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 Ain't not been nobody shout that night. Ain't not been no celebration that night. But when the death angel came by each one of the houses, he said, the blood's on the door. Let's keep going. Yes, The blood still works. Let's ask our officers to make ready that we might receive our offering. And we tell, uh, this is today is the first day of the month of May. First Sunday of the fifth month of another year. And those of you who help support our ministry, uh, when we have five Sundays ministries, uh, WUFO has gone up of their expenses. And so it's, it's well over 600, maybe almost $700. So just remember that ministry. We, we still are a tithing and offering church. We still don't do any of those other initiatives, but I just want you to know, Whenever there is a fifth Sunday, we pay for that fifth Sunday. So we would ask that please be mindful that the church has an outreach over the airways. And folks tell me all the time, Reverend, your ministry is, is matter of fact, y'all, I went to a place recently, and a man said to me, because he heard me order my food, he says, you must be the man that comes on at 8 o'clock. And I said, yes, sir. He said, man, I've, I've heard your ministry, and it's, it's been a help to my family. I said, well, thank you. I started to say, you ought to come by the church say thank you to the church. Amen. Because hey, well, you all make that possible. So thank you for your help and for your resources as we do ministry all across the city. Please stand now for the, uh, and follow the leading of the ushers from the rear of the church.
Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for, again, for the opportunity that you've given us that we may give, give back to you to say thank you for all you've done. I ask that this offering will be a blessing to your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Just before the choir comes back, I, I failed to give a report. Uh, Sister Wanda is doing well. Yes. Brother Joel, uh, is there any, any updating on Sister Wanda's status? Oh, slowly. Progressing. She's slowly progressing. She's doing well. Surgery was a success. She's doing well. Brother, Brother Jimmy is out of the hospital. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, back at, at the house and uh, he's being cared for by Sister Betty. And so we ask that you would continue to keep that family in your prayers. And for all of those of us who are going through times of challenge, physically, medically, whatever, we just ask that you would keep all of our family members in your prayers. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.